Morning all, this is the SP8, you've seen the pictures probably of several members SP8, so uh, it's not exactly new now is it really, but uh, I've had it about a week now, just under. Uh, again as per the photographs you can probably see, I've put the uh, Mammoth supplied pressure gauge. Um, when I was in the factory, <clears throat> they didn't have any made up, which I made one while I was there. Uh, or rather while I was looking around the factory um, but um, I don't think the head is actually made by themselves uh, obviously the fitting is and uh, I don't know where, which way to put it uh, which way looks the best and uh, most practical I thought about having it to right above and in line with the water gauge which probably makes sense but then again I thought well, most of the time you're going to operate it from at least this corner if not the front the gas valve here, uh, and you sort of like being in this corner, you can get hold of uh, get a good look of uh, everything you need to look at. Now, this is my first gas powered mammoth or gas fired mammoth, uh, so we'll see it get on. It is a little bit more, I don't know, I wouldn't say complicated, but there are more things to do, or more of the same things to do, uh, mainly oiling, of course. There's a lot more pivots. Uh, bearings to oil with the uh, eccentric val uh, valve there, valve gear there. There's a bit more, a few more pivots than you just single cylinder on top of the boiler fair. Uh, displacement lubricator, which I've just letting the oil go down a little bit more. I've just had a little, a drop more, steam more, and the uh, and, it, and it is literally a drop or two before it starts to fill up and then just let it go down it's not a lot put the old cap back in, now I've already filled the water approximately 120 millilitres of water on this occasion I haven't uh, there we go I haven't warmed it up first, I normally do but the um, there's a load of junk in the way uh, of the oven hob and everything and uh, I ought to get a separate kettle to boil the water for it. Uh, I see if you can see this. Uh, yes you can, yeah. There. I bought that from Wix's just because it was on the way back from um, the factory the other day. As you can see it's fitted with the uh, Mammoth supplied with the engine adapter. Just screw it on the top. Now I was quite surprised really, this was on a... Um, Three or four ninety nine. This tin or aerosol, which is six hundred and thirty one milliliters, it says there, and it's a mix. Um, it was the last time I went to the factory. I asked him about what he uses, and he said he uses a mix. Uh, and I was amazed; it was quite cheap, really, for a decent amount. So as well as being clean, it's cheap, which meths doesn't seem to be at the moment. But I don't know if any of you have used gas like this for a long time and now how many you can get out of the uh, one cannon like this. Anyway, I'm going to fill it up so if it goes everywhere you know I've made a boo-boo. Anyway, we'll get fouled off. I think that's enough. Definitely. <laughs> bit cold when it comes out and it smells, obviously. Right. Right, after a couple of attempts, I think I've got the DAC. I've got the lighter in here, not lit it yet. I'm looking through the slots in the side of the boiler, or the side of the housing. Right, the lighter works. And there we go. Just a touch open on the valve. The instructions say let it warm up a little bit like that to start with. And not too big a flame when you're ready. It does help if you have the lighter by the uh, burner when the gas is coming out. But the instructions say 
uh, light the lighter before turning on the gas. Right, I'm just seeing a nice little blue flame, so we just turn it up a fraction. Trying to do it so you can still see the model. There we go. That's for what? Just a little bit. Now we'll wait for a while. It's about two to three minutes and it should be ready. Just while we're waiting, a little bit to rope here, I'm going to try and zoom in on the flame. You can see a little bit there. That's quite a small flame, but perhaps similar, obviously definitely more, uh, shall we say, refined and controllable than the solid fuel and indeed the mess. That's quite a nice flame. It's got quite a point to it. I could probably turn it up a little bit more now. You can just see the flame there. There you are. Just turn it up just a fraction, on, and, it, and it's plenty. I mean, I might even turn it down a little bit more. But uh, definitely a lot cleaner. A little bit more awkward to, to light, just because of the confines of space. Uh, obviously, you can't remove the... Uh, well, if you didn't know, you can't remove the gas fire, or the gas burner, on this model. It's... Uh, you take your pick when you order the model, uh, solid fuel or gas fired, and it's fixed. Um, but as I say, with time, it'll come in practice, so we'll get a bit uh, more used and to it. Uh, probably just see the burner there, just starting to glow. Well, it's been glowing for quite a while, really. I'll take you around the engine, although you've probably seen the photographs by now. Not too good with a video camera, you've probably noticed already. This one has quite a vicious uh, zoom. If you're not too careful, it's a bit rapid. Anyway, as you can see, there's the gas tank and the control valve on the top with the filler and the flywheel with pulley and the uh, there's the. Uh, if I remember right, slip eccentric valve gear, i.e. you turn the fly over which way you want to go and eventually, with enough pressure, it will go that way. So it is reversible, but not via the usual lever. You just change the position of the push or pull on the flywheel, essentially. Now, there is the uh, cylinder piston lubricator set up. Now I'm told, I hope Mama doesn't like me saying this, but I was told that, that that is a sleeve valve, which you probably already know, a uh, design, and they're on about doing a D valve. Do ask me how that is or how it works exactly, but um, I think one of the things, it may be a bit more compact. Um, I was told that they may be looking at doing the bus well I say doing the bus because I don't sell that many it would be nice to fit a better, better stronger piston on the bus because of the weight but there we go anyway um, no movement on the pressure gauge yet but the uh, The safety valve's not lifting, so I suppose that's all good. But, um, well, many of you have seen it before, so it's not really new now, but uh, okay, just out, what, nearly a month, three weeks, two months now. And uh, I don't know whether I could turn the, uh, the, valve up a uh, the uh, gas valve up a little bit more. So I've been going a while now. But it was from Stone Cold, so we'll, we'll see. I've just noticed the pressure gauge is starting to move now with the safety valve just starting to lift, as it were, and it's showing about seven or eight. Well, I presume that's pounds per square inch. It's lifting now, perhaps just slow to react 
safety valve. Now I thought these were set for uh, was it 40 psi with a 20 psi option safety valve. Um, I didn't request either. I'll just you know pick one off the shelf as it were in this, in this factory. Anyway, we've gone up to 10 now, so that's just slow to get. <coughs> Excuse me. So we'll give it a whirl. Open the regulator a little bit. Crack it open a few times, I'm told, on the box. It's anti clockwise. Very easy to turn the safety valve. And now, uh, notice these. I don't, hope you don't uh, move uh, vibration, but anyway, let's, let's try. I'm very tight. But it is new. Here we go. That's better. Obviously, we'll need running in. A little bit more on the safety on the regulator. There you go. Now if that gauge is accurate uh, and it's going up all the time, so perhaps it's just slow, that's showing just over ten pounds and it's running. That if it is pounds. Just checking the uh, burner. I dare say I could turn the burner up a little bit, but uh, as it's new. Don't want to thrash the life out of it. All the instructions are on the box. Personally, they'd like a bit more detail in the instructions, you know, a little more of the ins and outs maybe. You don't really need those, of course, but like most handbooks these days, you get less, or handbooks and instructions, you get less than that. It's um, very quiet actually. The usual rattle and roll of a little SP1 or SP2, that sort of thing, it vibrates in its own fun way. Obviously this is a lot more controllable, you might even say it's sophisticated as well. Just shutting off the regulator slightly. Obviously, compared to a, a bit of full-size beam engine, it's it is fast, but uh, to me that's half the fun of the mammoths. If you want a proper slow, powerful, really powerful model engine, then it's something like a, a Stewart, isn't it? With the money, although not cheap, those are considerably more. We'll start to fly now. That's wide open. Put down a bit. Just do it. Oh, it is quite easy to adjust the uh, the steam. And of course it may be because I've got the burner low while I'm going to pressure, but it's running at like 10, just under 10 pounds at the moment. So. so uh we'll we'll see what uh, we can get out the pressure gauge shortly. But the safety valve seems to lift about 10. Don't want that's that's almost shut tight now. At about 10 psi. Of course, if I've got all these uh, readings wrong, please do tell. I've had mammoths for years, but I'm still a bit rusty. 
after uh, dusted them off the shelf after uh, oh, what must be oh, 14 years I suppose but as you can see I've been sucked in again <laughs> Yeah, safety valve is lifting at about 10, just under 10 psi. So all I can assume is that's a more or less a standard safety valve, instead of the, shall we say, rumoured, or perhaps a bit more than that, um, higher safety valve. But uh, I don't know. But uh, from what I've been reading, some of you in some countries have uh, laws issues with running things with slightly more pressure than the standard form. So perhaps that's why it's, uh, it comes with standard. If that is the case, I would probably not have bothered with the uh, pressure gauge. It is a little bit different, and that's the main thing. I, I bought one for this engine. Um, it is expensive, though. Uh, I think it's about seventy pounds. Um, but. Uh, how often do you pull a whistle on a stationary engine, or indeed any of the engines really, except to let the remaining pressure out once you've finished, and then to empty the water. But that's that is that's not too bad at all. It's very little regulator there. In fact, it's it's, it's almost shut. The uh, instructions do say to check the steam chest bolts after a while. There's no leaks. And I dare say that will run merrily like that for quite a while. We've probably used about a quarter of the water. Maybe a third from the maximum fill level. The question is what to uh, drive it with McKenna. But it's going nicely now. I think I'll contact uh, Mamad later, ask about the safety valve. And uh, for my use I might I might go for the higher pressure just to see that little dial go over a bit more. <laughs> oh, on the box here, I'm just reading the box here, there's all sorts of um, hints and safety advice and tips and obviously normal operating instructions. But it does say, in the general hints, before the first flush boil, uh, run, I'll start again, before the first run, flush boiler with warm water and lemon juice. Now I tried this once I got some lemon juice, um, 60p a bottle of 250 mils from Morrison's in the end. Uh, I did it a few times to get some little black bits come out of it, so I thought I'd uh, try my very first one doing the same, which is my SP1 boiler, and got uh, um, just a little bit of stuff out. And with this, I've got a small LED, I've spread a tweezers, LED torch lamp. Or um, watching this. Uh, where are we? There we are. See there. That's just small enough. You can get in one of the holes, the safety valve or the water fill level plug hole. And you squint and you can get an idea, only an idea, what they look like inside. And I was quite surprised with SP1. It was pretty good. Yeah, there's a bit of scaling, but it is, uh, I don't know, 27 years since I had it and I bought it new. And mostly it's been run on distilled or uh, deionised water. Occasionally it's been run on tap water and it's uh, it's pretty good. I'd like to get a camera inside but something that small is, a, is quite expensive if you can get something that small. Um, but nice to look. But that, that's going nicely now, I like that. We're getting a bit of uh, slurry now from down the bottom of the uh, chimney where it exhausts. I suppose is to uh, will happen. 
with the displacement lubricator but at least you're getting some oil exactly where you need it instead of a sort of a hit and hope affair of dropping it here and there but there is something to be said for the more simple models I think it's nice in my opinion well it doesn't say on the box at least I haven't found it unless I've missed it it's like how long it will run for on a, a charge of gas for water, you know, do you get two gas to one water, that sort of thing. But uh, you've got everything you need on the side of the box. Just there. Just stopped. Let's have a look. Yeah, the flames just dropped slightly. Yes, you could get a real roaring flame if you wanted to. I'm just going to keep it so it stays just under the boil of that. Going to walk around the sides, causing any causing any burning on the sides. I mean that's virtually off, and it's going quite well. Smooth. Yes, we would like it to go slower, but. Uh, yeah, the control. Turn the flame down a little. It's a little bit awkward to get oil down the back. I know I should be using thinner oil really, but guess what I haven't got? You can just drop it down. With a bit of practice, he says. There we go. Next on the books, uh, I'm thinking of an SP7. I'm just waiting for a reply to see, uh, well, and the funds to be honest, to see whether we could uh, get one gas fired. Uh, my main reason for gas firing as opposed to solid fuel is just the mess that solid fuel makes under the boilers. Small flame now. It does suggest to just to experiment with the flame, see what's best for you, but not to turn it up too high. Not quite, is it not quite there? Let's try the other way. Seems to like to go better one way than the other, but the size is running in. Turn the flame up a bit. Plenty of water.
turn the flame slightly down. It would be interesting to see if we can get a stiffer safety valve to see what power we can get out of her. But just as a model to just sit and watch and enjoy. It's very nice. Quite expensive of course, but uh, the quality is pretty good. More than pretty good I would say. It would be nice if there was a nice, I suppose, if, uh, this is nostalgia really, if there was a nice mammoth transfer on the, one of the sides of the uh, firebox wall. But of course all that little things had to cost, I suppose. we we'll find out what's squeaking, would be nice. <laughs> See what she goes like. Now that's quite a small flame. I'll turn it up a bit more. We're about uh, halfway down on the water. And we're starting to suck the life out the boiler a bit there. Let's just get it going. Let it build up a little bit. Seems to be pretty happy with just a small opening. Right, uh, I'll apologise now for my shaky hands, but while she's running, let's have a little bit more close up look. Very little opening on the regulator. Zoom in a little bit. Not going too mad. And that's layer to focus. Let me hold it there. Got water on. We've still got about a third left before the bottom of the glass. Obviously, we won't get let it get right to the bottom of the glass. And let's see what the flame's like now. Get a good shot of it there. Well, a shot of it. 
a nice steady flow Pressure is dropping. So we assume, quite rightly by the looks of it, yes, the gas has gone. So there's no uh, real chance of you uh, having too much gas to water as long as you make sure that the gas tank is full on startup and you've got full maximum amount of water in up to the line as usual so as long as you operate it within the instructions I know this sounds silly to you chaps and maybe chapesses um, you shouldn't blow it up I won't mention my boss from years ago right <clears throat> second firing I've now got some thinner oil put them on the pivots and not surprisingly to you folk, it does get to the parts that other oils cannot reach. Obviously the engine is a little bit more running and it's running a lot freer as you can see it's on virtually no steam at all. And uh, it, it's going well. I would prefer it slower but to appreciate it is a model. And it's not the cost of something like a Stuart. That said, we are a little bit higher on the flame than before. And it is uh, just the last just two fires, you know, you've got to experiment with the flame. Now I've just, I've just turned the flame down as you can see. And, it, and it's made a difference straight away. Let's see how big the flame is. Yeah, not too much, I think it's all. It's been running for a while, so I don't know how much gas is left in there. But yes, it does need to run in, like any engine really. And the pressure gauge there, it says, uh, I can't quite make out what the, what the labelling is, just above the needle there. If anybody can see that and tell me, let me know. So, uh, it's uh, fun to watch. Of course, the question is, what in Meccano are we going to drive with it? Perhaps a beam engine. <laughs> Here we are, we have the flame turned up, not totally high, but turned up a little and opened up. And it goes rather quick. Seems to, 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 to uh, well, sustain quite well. Obviously, the uh, control of the flame does help this. Of course, I'm probably telling you to all you folks and know this already, but. Uh, you can see it uh, goes along really well. Try and shut down a little bit.
I must admit I have fun filling the tank for some strange reason, but again, not really used to it of course. So we've got half a glass full there on the boiler of water. And uh, safety valve just starting to lift there. Go for another speed test. Obviously then just start to uh, keep it up indefinitely of course. Plus the uh, She's been running for a while now, so the gas might be getting a bit low. But definitely uh, running in nicely now, just on the second run. Seems to be, uh, not that it was bad at all, but uh, I must pop out and get some of the recommended oil anyway, which should be cheap for a litre, or fairly cheap. I'll give that a whirl. As usual, there's many different oils in the workshop. Alright, kitchen, you've probably noticed, but uh, never exactly the ones you really need, I suppose. Sod's law. Almost off now. Very nice to watch. Third firing, and as you can see, it uh, well, like a train. Oh yeah. And that's from a fairly small flame. Very small actually because I've been uh, trying to uh, get it slow, running slow, which, I, which I, I have been able to. Let's just shut it down. As you can see, um, I'll just let it settle on the, uh, I think, third firing. And you can see, with the regulator closed, it is the uh, 40 PSI uh, safety valve. Uh, just sitting, stuff on my face with dinner and uh, enjoying it. Uh, let's just see a look at the safety valve. Yes, they've got a house. I did house, I've heard of them. Those two favourite Australian bands. Yes. <coughs> can't see anything yet. I tell you, you probably can't see it on the video, but you can hear it. And there you go. So it will run quite comfortably. It's got a 10 PSI, that's just under anyway. With a small flame. And just a bit of regulator, you can get it to run quite slowly. Obviously running at full chaff from 40 psi, sucks the life out of the boiler. But uh, there you go. That was really quick. As is the norm really I suppose, but uh, you do need to experiment with your flame size and then you can uh, once you've got that sorted uh, tweak to your heart's content <laughs> 